I'm Dr. Liz Bridges. I am the current president of the American Association of Critical Care Nurses, and um, I'm pleased to be here today to talk about ethical considerations for the COVID-19 vaccine with my colleague, Dr. Christine Grady. Dr. Grady is a nurse bioethicist. She's a senior investigator at the National Institutes of Health, and she currently serves as the chief of the Department of Bioethics at the National Institutes of Health. Dr. Grady's work is predominantly related to ethics and clinical trials, and also the ethics of clinical care, specifically as related to, to nursing. And so we're very pleased to have you here today, Dr. Grady. Thank you, Dr. Bridges. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So as a nurse and, and a bioethicist, uh, I'm sure the pandemic has, I, I know the pandemic has had you in overdrive about the, the huge number of ethical issues that nurses are, are facing. And as we are now in the, in the initiation of vaccinations, what are some of the key ethical issues that you think healthcare organizations will face as related to the vaccines? So healthcare organizations, of course, have to figure out the who, what, when, where, and how of vaccinating employees and patients eventually. Um, <clears throat> I think ethically, the, the complicated place that we're beginning is because there is insufficient amount of vaccine for everyone who might appropriately be vaccinated. Um, as many of you know, there, there have been a number of groups who have spent some time over the last several months, including the um, National Academy of Science and Engineering and Medicine, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices that advises the CDC, the um, Strategic Advisory Committee on, of experts for the WHO, and a number of academics as well, who have spent time sorting out a framework for ethically allocating vaccine, um, appreciating or anticipating that at the beginning we won't have enough. So, and the, they all sort of agree on the main values, which is kind of interesting, the main values and goals of ethical allocation, that the primary um, value should be maximizing benefit, per, you know, reducing disease, reducing serious disease, but that that's not the only principle or value. The other ones are um, making sure that we pay attention to how to keep society running in ways that preserve function. Um, and another one is paying attention to equity and uh, the kinds of disadvantages that are showing up and how we can address or mitigate them in terms of um, allocating vaccines. And all of these are really important and very useful values that guide the, the, the determinations that healthcare organizations are going to have to make or are making, I guess is a better way to say it. They are making them. Um, it's interesting too, though, that it doesn't stop there. So once you say maximizing benefit, who comes to the top of the list are healthcare providers, and especially healthcare providers who have contact, direct contact with patients, who are in high risk occupations in terms of their contact with patients, maybe exposure prone uh, uh, procedures and activities. Critical care nurses are way at the top of that list. And so healthcare, healthcare organizations, excuse me, have to make further granular decisions about, okay, among the healthcare workers that work in our institutions or institution, how do we prioritize them? Who gets the top priority? How do we roll this out in a fair way over time as more vaccine becomes available? And how do we protect the, the staff that we have and give them the option of volunteering to be vaccinated. I think it's an interesting point about, you know, the transparency of those of those decisions as well that in, individuals see um, not only at a national level, but at, at, at an organizational level, how those how those decisions are, are being made. Right. One of the things you mentioned is is that uh, the frontline healthcare providers are are going to be are, are now um, already being vaccinated. But we know from surveys and providers, both nurses and physicians that they have legitimate concerns about the, about the vaccine. So what are some of the ethical uh, considerations that nurses need to ponder as they make um, their choices about uh, receiving the vaccine? That's a wonderful question because I think 
as we all know, I mean, nurses are so essential to this, to, to the response to this pandemic in so many ways. And although nurses are very uh, highly respected profession all the time, I think this year people have begun to really appreciate the value of having nurses in various places. Um, and yet, and so nurses are at the front line and they should be at the front of the, front of the line for vaccines as well. And yet there are data that show that nurses, as well as other healthcare professionals, professionals and members of the public are hesitant to take vaccines. When asked further why they didn't want to, or they weren't so sure about it, they said they had a very low level of confidence in the process and confidence in the science, and also were concerned about the speed with which things have occurred. And so you asked, you know, what do individual nurses, what, how should they consider the ethics of, of deciding for themselves whether to get vaccinated? So the first thing I think they, nurses need to think about is why are, why, are, why are we at the front of the line? We're at the front of the line because we're in positions where we are exposed, not all of us, but many of us, exposed to risk in our profession and we are needed. We're needed to respond to the, for, um, the patient care needs in this pandemic and many other things that nurses are, are doing. Um, secondly, I think that we should all appreciate the benefits of getting vaccinated. The benefits of getting vaccinated are, you know, it reduces COVID disease and, and including severe disease. So that's really important. Secondly, it's certainly a lot safer than getting infected with the virus itself and getting sick from the virus itself. And third, it's a way to contribute to resolving this pandemic, both for ourselves, for our families, for our friends, for our patients, and for the society at large. So those are really three really important uh, things that nurses should keep in mind. But then nurses, like everybody else, need information. They need information in order to make an informed decision about whether or not to take a vaccine. And that information should include things about the process by which these vaccines were developed, the research studies that were done. The nurses need information about what those data are, how they were granted an emergency use authorization, what an emergency use authorization means, what the side effects or uh, lack of serious side effects that the, the data show, but that both of these vaccines are reactogenic and what that means. And then in the end, each person, each nurse makes their own choice about whether or not to get vaccinated. I think one of the most important things you said there, and, and the, the theme that seems to run through that is nurses are, are evidence driven. Um, and this is yet one more place where we need to make sure that we continue that, that evidence-driven practice, not only for our patients, but, but for our, ourselves and to hold it to the same standard that we do for any other clinical decision or, or clinical practice, um, albeit that this one is, is a very personal decision. Absolutely, I can't agree more with you. So can you talk a little bit about how we need to think about applying the, the, the code of ethics during the COVID pandemic as it uh, applies particularly to the vaccinations? Yeah. So I think the uh, ANA code, code for nurses, uh, code of ethics for nurses really provides very valuable guidance for nurses about their ethical responsibilities. And, and as everybody probably knows, there are nine tenets in the most recent version of the um, ANA code for, code for nurses. Um, I think all of them apply in a certain way to this understanding of how you respond in a pandemic and, and whether or not and how you decide about taking a, a vaccine. But I think there are two in particular that are um, speak to this directly. Uh, and that's number four and number five. And number four, I'm just going to read them just so because I think it's uh, helpful to think about them. Uh, number four says the nurse has authority, accountability, and responsibility for nursing practice, makes decisions, and takes action consistent with the obligation to promote health and to provide optimal care. And there is a way in which getting vaccinated so that you can be safe in your own profession, in your own job, 
and in your own life um, fulfills this commitment that's in the in the uh, code for nurses. The next one, number five, also speaks to this, I think. It, and number five says, the nurse owes the same duties to self as to others, including the responsibility to promote health and safety, preserve wholeness of character and integrity, maintain competence, and continue personal and professional growth. So in duties to self, it we have a responsibility to ourselves to protect ourselves from getting sick, from spreading virus, from you know being unable to take care of our patients or our families. So Dr. Grady, as we, as we think about uh, moving forward, is there any other additional guidance you have for nurses um, as they weigh the risks and benefits of vaccination against COVID-19? Again, I think we've already said it is to keep, each of us needs to keep our own well-being at the forefront. And that's really important. We can't take good care of patients if we don't take good care of ourselves. And in order to do that, we need to make informed decisions about vaccination. We need to know the evidence, we need to know our own situations, and we need to make informed decisions. A third thing that I would say, and I'm not sure we mentioned it before, is I think we need to keep in mind that um, nurses have a lot of respect in society. People respect nurses very highly and trust them. And therefore, we're in a position as nurses um, to help others understand what's going on. And we, we always need to remember that our words and our actions really matter. Um, we can counter some of the scientific misinformation or false information. We can offer people resources and um, ways to find information. And those, not only patients, but families and friends and others that we encounter so that others can also make informed decisions about vaccinations for themselves. So let me ask you the, the last question. When it is your turn, will you be receiving the vaccine? I will, absolutely. Me, me too. I will, be, I will be right there in line, absolutely. Yep. Dr. Grady, I wanna, I wanna thank you for taking time um, out, of, out of your busy schedule, but I think also for bringing us yet one more source of, of evidence and a framework to, to think about um, this experience that we are all going through and, and to help nurses make some, some decisions about how they're gonna proceed with, with the vaccine. Thank you very much for asking me to speak with you today. And I hope that uh, every nurse has the information and the support that they need to be able to make a good decision.